Consider the human brain. A weakly pigmented anatomical complex with wrinkled lobes folded up neatly in your cranium, running on less power than a refrigerator light bulb. 16.5 centimeters long, 14 centimeters wide, nine centimeters high, about the size of two clenched fists. It is an organ that can consider itself. In the past, intellect was thought to reside in the liver, the heart, even the kidneys, not in this furrowed gelatinous lump. We have learned that the brain's existential weight far exceeds its physical weight of 1.2 kilograms. The organ manages the most spectacular of human abilities. The brain thinks, but how? From Pioneer Works, I'm Jan Eleven, and this is Scale. Now, let us bring into focus the brain on three distinct scales. The micro scale, nanometer sized neurons, the domain of the invisible. The macro scale, a brain the size of a planet, a realm that can seem improbably vast. The human scale, this is the world that we can perceive. To perceive the brain on this scale, we must try to understand perception itself. We'll start here. We hallucinate our experience of the world. This brain was inside a person, and when they died, it was donated to the Harvard Brain Tissue Resource Center to be studied along with 7,000 other brains. Everything this person saw, heard, smelled, tasted and sensed, their thoughts and dreams, were the imaginative interpretation of a physical world with no intrinsic colors, notes, odors, tastes, or feelings. No intrinsic sensory character. This vivid visualization of redness exists only in our minds. By modulating electrical voltages, we create the color red on this screen. But what you see is the hallucination of red. Red is the product of your body as a network of detectors like our eyes, stimulated by the external world, light scattered off of an object. In that sense, there is no objective experience of reality. There is only the subjective hallucination of a shared reality. But the brain does more than just passively conjure up apparitions. The brain has a reserve of predictions based on past experience to help shape perception. Very early in life, we learn that noses protrude from faces and light usually comes from above. That experience of the world is etched deeply in our brains, insisting this mask is convex, even though we know it to be concave. Our brain's predictions generate perception as well as reflect reality. Neuroscientist Anil Seth puts it like this. It's not, I'll believe it when I see it, but if your brain believes it, then you will see it. We draw on memory to anticipate a sliver of the future just ahead of sensory feedback, granting us an evolutionary advantage. And Bugs Bunny gets away. We hallucinate an internal world as much as an external world. The unconscious states of our bodies rely on the synthesis of prediction and interpretation for a coherent somatic experience, a map of the self. The brain doesn't just map a body as self. The brain creates a self or an illusion of self that is aware and conscious. But how does consciousness emerge? What is the physical basis of consciousness? 
to attempt to understand the actual mechanisms of the mind. Let's leave behind the human level and zoom down to the micro scale. Here in a basement lab at Harvard University is a server that holds nearly a million and a half gigabytes of data. It stores one thing and one thing only, a scan of one cubic millimeter of human brain tissue removed from a living brain during a procedure to stop epileptic seizures. Several floors up, neuroscientist Jeff Lichtman navigates the data using a program called NeuroGlancer. Nearly a million and a half gigabytes to visualize something so small, the world within is incredibly detailed and vast. As we travel further inside the tissue, our field of view shrinks from half a millimeter down to 500 nanometers, about a thousandth the width of a human hair. 50,000 cells fly by. The most important among them is the neuron. From the decentralized neural net of the hydra to the remarkable cerebellum of the elephant, all brains are collections of neurons. They evolved maybe more than once, hundreds of millions of years ago. Each neuron is mere microns across, hovering on the threshold of human vision. Networks of these specialized cells, in our case, 86 billion of them, power thought and action. At the micro level, neurons are inanimate components in an electrical circuit. Similar to a battery, each storing about 70 millivolts of energy, energy emitted when they fire. The basic chemistry and physics of the neuron shapes the way we adjust to stimuli and the way we perceive the world. Neurons react to change, responding as you plunge into cold water or blinkingly emerge from darkness into light. Neurons fire when we first meet a stimulus but slow to a stop with exposure. The goosebumps deflate. We meet the light without squinting. We've evolved to cope with the onslaught of information the world presents by ignoring the predictable. We recognize a crowd without differentiating individual faces. We acclimate to aromas. We accept an internal map of a static room. As we hallucinate our approximation of the world, our attention is demanded by the unexpected. We understand the biology at this scale. We have a detailed blueprint of the circuitry of the brain and intricate maps of the neuroanatomy. Yet, we still do not comprehend how the vivid human experience, consciousness, emerges from the goo and lightning of this micro realm. The neuron retreats to the unseeable. We pan out, past the human realm, past the limitations of our perception, to the macro scale. This is planet Earth. 117 billion human brains have lived here since the evolution of Homo sapiens. Eight billion are alive today. If the self arises from 86 billion neurons, none of which are conscious on their own. What might emerge from the combined efforts of all those billions of brains? Slime molds and social insects benefit from swarm intelligence. Elegant, often surprisingly simple rules guide the colony to solve problems that individuals could not. We too demonstrate a swarm intelligence, one more sophisticated than that of insects. We can problem solve as individuals. We can learn from each other and our ancestors. Consider the invention of fire, the spear, the industrial revolution, the internet. Now observe planet Earth from orbit. These satellite images reveal humanity at a scale of individual insignificance. Here, we are like an expanding slime mold. Our roadways almost mimic neural pathways. 
City centers light up like neurons firing. Out of individual insignificance, collective consequences appear. These are satellite images from NASA documenting climate change. Wildfires burn, ice sheets melt, storms overwhelm. This is our planetary brain today. What if in the future, a coherent consciousness emerges from the collective of humanity? Could an individual human mind be an unaware element in a self-aware consciousness? A cumulative consciousness composed of 8 billion living minds and the billions that have come before. A mind the scale of a planet, with us, the individuals, as unaware as an ant in a colony or as a neuron in a human brain. We have traveled through three scales of the brain, human, micro, and macro. Reality is hallucinated. A neuron fires, 117 billion homo sapiens and counting, until the planet decides our fate. This is scale.